Hello everyone, this is Xu Hai from University of Washington. It's my great pleasure to present our work enabling hand gesture customization on wrist-worn devices. Advances in worn sensing technologies have led to promising hand gesture recognition systems. Regardless of the modality, typical systems are designed with predefined gestures. However, to truly leverage gesture input, devices should allow users to add their own gestures. This has several advantages, including better gesture memorability, higher interaction efficiency, and enhanced accessibility for people with specific needs. Such a system needs to have two key requirements. First, it should support a rapid and minimal data collection process. Second, it should prevent performance degradation of the original gesture set. Some early systems have explored future gesture recognition. For example, you will apply dynamic time warping to distinguish in-ear gestures on a handheld controller. However, such a system cannot work well for more natural and fine-grained gestures. There is no prior work achieving gesture customization on wearable devices. More importantly, prior work did not aim to balance the performance between the existing and the new gestures. For a truly robust system, doing equally well on both is important. In this work, we propose a gesture customization framework to achieve the goal. We first train a deep learning model to recognize four predefined gestures. They are single pinch, double pinch, single clench, and double clench. Our model has good accuracy and is robust to noisy motion. However, as we can see in this video, it does not recognize any out-of-dictionary gestures. To add a new gesture, the user just performs it three times and an additional lightweight model will be trained at the moment. In the video, the user repeated the finger snap three times to add it as a new gesture. A model that only recognizes this gesture will be trained in real time. Once a new model is trained, the user can then use the new gesture in real time. Meanwhile, the performance of the existing gestures is not affected. Our framework starts by training a predefined gesture recognition model as the backbone. We conducted a large-scale user study with over 500 users under various contexts, collecting over 100,000 gesture samples, as well as 60 hours of negative data with natural daily behaviors. We design a simple deep learning architecture that takes six data channels from accelerometer and gyroscope as the input, and outputs the gesture predictions. Our classifier achieves over 95 accuracy on the four predefined gestures, including a number five negative class, and its false positive rate is very low. A custom gesture is a new class for the pre-trained model, but its small sample size makes it impossible to train a new model from scratch. Therefore, we leverage the first half of the pre-trained model as a feature embedding extractor, and then we train an independent, lightweight prediction head for each user's gesture customization. The additional small model only recognizes a custom gesture and a negative class. Combining the additional model and the pre models, then we can cover the complete gesture set. However, three data points are still very limited for training any model. Thus, we leverage a series of techniques to maximize these few shots. First, we employ standard data augmentation techniques to generate both positive and negative data. Second, we use a delta encoder to learn the natural behavior variation within each gesture and apply it to the new gesture to generate more samples with a similar variation. Third, we leverage adversarial training to perturb the data towards the decision boundary so that the model can be more robust. Combining them all together, our pipeline is shown as follows. Given three shots of the new custom gesture from the user, we first conduct a data segmentation to find the gesture samples. Then, we apply the data augmentation technique to generate more data. We feed this data through the pre model to obtain feature embeddings. Using these embeddings, we further generate more data via data synthesis. Finally, we train our prediction head with an adversarial training strategy. We evaluated our framework with 20 users on 12 new gestures. Each user performed each gesture five times in one session and repeated five sessions with different watch positions. The figure on the left shows the performance of the prediction head on the custom gestures. Four lines correspond to adding one to four new gestures. As we can see, with just three shots, the model can achieve an effort score of over 80%, even when adding four new gestures. On the right side, when we combine the pre model and the prediction head and consider the whole gesture set, the performance is even better. Meanwhile, our model keeps a very low false positive rate. We also compare our technique against a few baseline methods 
our technique outperforms them by at least 10 percentage on average. To further ensure that the gesture is reliable, we designed an interactive customization experience. Instead of simply accepting any gesture, our framework provides real-time feedback when a new gesture belongs to the following situations. First, the new gesture is too close to an existing gesture. In the video, the user tried to add a double pinch as a new gesture, which was rejected by the system based on the cosine distance of the new gesture embeddings and the existing gestures embeddings. Second, there is too much variability across gesture shots. In the video, the user first used the middle finger to step two times and then used the index finger to step one time. The system rejected such a gesture by using a distance threshold across gesture shots. Third, the new gesture is too confusing against unintended interactions. Here, the user wanted to add hand waving as a new gesture. However, the comparison between the new gesture and the set of pre stored embeddings of daily life activities indicates that this gesture is too common in daily life, so the system rejected it. Fourth, the new gesture results in suboptimal recognition performance. In this video, after the user did the gesture three times, the model performance is not so good. The system asks the user whether they want to collect more samples. They can either go with the current model or provide additional samples to retrain the model. And the user picks the latter. After the model was trained with more shots, the user could use this new gesture smoothly, while still having a good performance on the existing gestures. Our overall interaction experience is designed as follows. The user starts by creating and repeating the new gesture three times, and the real-time system will segment and analyze them. If the gesture falls into any of the red block situations, the system will require the user to define a new gesture. Otherwise, it will proceed with the model training. If the model has a good performance, then the process is completed. If not, it will ask for your decision about additional shots. If the retraining still had a bad performance, then the user needs to define another gesture. We evaluated the usability of our real-time system with 20 users. They first tested the existing gestures and added a predefined new gesture. And then they are free to add any custom gesture they want. The results of the system performance and the user's system usability scale scores both indicate that our system is robust, quick to learn, and easy to use. With this, I'd like to end my talk. I want to thank my wonderful team for making this idea come into reality. Hope everyone stays safe and healthy around the world. I'm happy to answer any questions.